<laughs> Hello, everyone. Good evening, and welcome to our birthday celebration of Chiara Luce Badana. My name is Mark Villarica, and I'm from Los Angeles. And I'm Dulce Bautista, and I'm from Houston. We are very excited to have you with us. And tonight, we're going to be discussing the life of Chiara Luce Badana and her impact on the life of, of so many people here in North America. First, though, we'd like to give a quick thank you to our sponsors who made this event possible, including New City Press, the Youth Center for North America, and Living City Magazine. Now, this event is centered on honoring what would have been Chiara Lucha Badano's 50th birthday, and we're going to be hearing from many people who have been directly inspired by her lifestyle and faith. So for those of you who do not know much about Chiara Luce or who have never heard about her, here's a quick introduction. Chiara Luce was born in Italy in 1971. When she was 16, she was diagnosed with osteogenic sarcoma, a painful bone cancer. Chiara died on October 7th, 1990 at the age of 18. She lived her life and illness with such faith and grace that she was beatified by the Catholic Church in 2010. In fact, her feast day is tomorrow, October 29th. What's most remarkable about Chiara Luce is that even though she was going through great physical hardships and pain, she didn't focus on her illness and suffering. Instead, her primary goal day in and day out was to love her neighbors and live the will of God. We view her mindset and way of life as an example of what we call ordinary holiness which is the idea that you can honor God and continue to put love first in each of your actions and days, no matter how simple or small they may seem. Exactly. Chiara was also able to live this lifestyle because of her participation in a community called the Focolare Movement. She became a member of the Focolare when she was nine and lived the spirituality of the Focolare until her last days. In fact, she received her middle name, Luce, which means light, from the foundress, Chiara Lubic. The spirituality of the Focolare is based on the gospel and aims at building fraternal relationships among individuals, peoples, religions, and cultures. Many of the people that you will hear today are members of the Focolare and follow the same spirituality that helped Chiara Luce make her life a masterpiece of love. We're going to be showing several videos and hearing experiences from those whom Chiara Luce has inspired. So this program is meant to be an introduction of her life and legacy. Today is also an opportunity to present to you two brand new books that go deeper into her life that you may be interested in purchasing. The first is called Blessed Chiara Badano, Her Secrets to Happiness, which is an illustrated book by Geraldine Guadagno and Loretta Rauschuber. And the second book is called In My Staying Is Your Going. The Life and Thoughts of Chiara Luce Badano, which is written by the Badano Foundation. We will have a chance to learn more about these books during our program today. We want to start our program with a very special greeting we received from Bishop Michael Mulvey from Corpus Christi, Texas. He sent us an audio message where he also mentions the new illustrated book on Chiara Luce. Let's take a look. Hello everyone, I am Bishop Michael Mulvey of the Diocese of Corpus Christi, and I'm pleased to greet all of you who have joined online here today to celebrate what would have been the 50th birthday of Blessed Chiara Luce Badano. God's work through her life continues, and it is good for us to take time to recognize it and to communicate to the new generation the life of faith that she embodied. Several of the young people who come for confirmation already in the last couple of years have used her name as their confirmation name. Blessed Cara Badano, Her Secrets at, to Happiness is an invitation to everyone, but especially to young people. It's an invitation to discover the beauty of a deep relationship with God. It's a relationship that develops by living in the present moment and by serving others even amid their own trials. Each one of us has our own unique journey to experience with God, and yet we can all be accompanied with each other along the way. May God continue to inspire each one of us to live his word 
to live the present moment and to see the presence of Jesus in every neighbor. God bless each one of you. Okay, great. Thank you, Bishop Mulvey, for your greeting and blessing. As Bishop Mulvey mentioned, several women chose Chiara as a confirmation name. And not only, we also know that there are several religious women who choose Chiara Luce for their religious name. In this next video, you will see six young women coming from different walks of life, but who are united by the namesake of Chiara Luce. Hi, my name is Cecilia. I am from Moreno Valley, California and I currently work as a software engineer. Hi, my name is Therese Castillo, and I'm originally from Corpus Christi, Texas, but I'm currently a freshman here at the University of Dallas. My name is Sister Kiara Marie, and I'm a Sister of Christian Charity. My name is Sophia Blanc. Um, I am an environmental engineer living in central New Jersey. My name is Katie Hutera, and I'm a senior at Texas State University in San Marcos, Texas. My name is Sister Chiara Luce, and I am a member of the Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist, from Ann Arbor, Michigan. I remember the first time I ever heard about Chiara Luce Badano. I was very young. I think I was around five or six years old, and even at that young age, I remember I was very struck by her story. So struck that later, when I went to be confirmed, I just had this feeling that I had to choose her as my confirmation saint. I chose Chiara Luce Badano to be my confirmation name um, because I just found her story so moving. You know, she was the first saint or saint to be who I ever felt like I could relate to in a meaningful way. You know, I felt like she could have been one of my sisters living in today's world, and so I felt like she was really the only choice that made sense. I first learned about Blessed Chiara Luce at a retreat when I saw her picture on the wall. And like so many others, I was struck by the light and the joy in her eyes. And I wanted to learn more about her. So I watched her documentary and I was just so struck how clearly I could see Jesus reliving his life and his passion through her life. And I wanted to surrender myself in that same spirit. I chose Kiara because she was someone who I was familiar with, but I also felt like I could relate to her story. And even more recently, I found myself going back to her story and praying with her words of, for you, Jesus, if you want it, I want it too. And I chose Chiara Luce Badano as my confirmation saint because I was really inspired by the model of her life as a gen. Um, knowing that, you know, she read the same gospel, the same word of life, and she's on her way to becoming a saint. It just made me realize that holiness is very attainable. Um, I picked her because she continues to inspire me to meet Jesus and love him in all things, um, especially in the present moment and um, when things are hard. And I've never looked back on that decision and I, and I feel like a little piece of the love that emanated from Chiara Luce gets to live through me. I hope to, and I strive to like bless a Chiara to live in a way that all my actions are for you, Jesus. And I think it's encouraging for young women and men to look to her life and realize that we can strive for sainthood within our own everyday life. And by looking to saints like Chiara, we can better understand what living a life for Christ looks like within our own lives. It just, she always inspires me to say my yes to whatever is coming my way. And she um, gives me hope that I too can become a great saint. And I love teaching my students about her. They love seeing her pictures. Um, that looks so similar to our own this day, and it gives them hope that oh yes, I I can become I can become a saint, because Kiara shows that it's in the ordinary living of our lives, and acceptance of God's will. Jesus, if you want it, I want it too.
Wow, what an inspira- inspiration. <laughs> it was beautiful to see how Kera's Lucha's life has impacted so many of these women. Next, because this is supposed to be a party, we need some music. So we have Anne Rusher from Ohio here to present a song she composed for Kiara Luce. My name is Anne. Um, I'm very excited and honored to be a part of tonight and to be here with you. Um, and in just a minute, you're going to hear a song that I wrote um, that I'm going to share with you. But before I do, I wanted to just take a minute to kind of give you a little bit of the backstory of the song and where it came from. So when I was 20, there was a group of youth um, from my youth group that were putting together a presentation about the life of Kiara Luce to present to the community. Um, and my youth leader at the time knew that I liked to write songs. And so she asked me if I would write one um, for this event. I just wasn't sure how that was gonna go. I just really couldn't say no. And so I told her that I would. Um, and I could put it off for quite a while and just kind of just set it on the back burner and was like, I'll get some inspiration at some point. And then it just never really came. And so one night we were talking on the phone and I was explaining to her that I was really having a hard time, like, um, I guess putting into words what the life of Chiara Luce had meant to me because I had known about her from a young age and she was someone that I held in very high regard. In some ways, she was so relatable because she was lovingly coined, you know, the Satan genes because she was somebody who was so down to earth. She just was a young girl just living her life. Um, but at the same time, she was completely unrelatable because she lived her life in this extraordinary way. And so I was talking with my uh, youth uh, leader at the time and I was explaining that I was having a hard time. And she said, write the song for the one person in the audience who needs to hear a message of hope, you know, who needs to hear about the hope that Chiara Luce's message brings. Um, and that was really all the inspiration that I needed because I think that phrase summed up so beautifully what Chiara Luce brings to the world because she is all genuineness, all simplicity, um, just a true authenticity of that's what she brought to the world, but in such a beautiful and extraordinary way. And so that um, conversation with my youth leader was what put that the line in my head that was ultimately the beginning of the refrain, which was, um, this is a call to anyone who's ever felt alone, because that's really what Chiara Luce was for my life. And what I think she was for so many people was a call to holiness because it was, she did, she brought that call in such an authentic and relatable way, um, just simply being who she was. And that was really all there was to it. The song that you're about to hear is called Faith. I'm very grateful to be able to share it with you all today. And I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much. And pray that this 
is a call to anyone who's ever felt alone. They wish for something more than what they're living for. This is an anthem to the broken hearted. They cry in the night for the souls who cannot fight anymore. Together we can make this right. If we Tonight, see we go how the ending starts. How could I forget the pain it felt like a bullet in my heart? It felt like a lifetime. As I waited to hear them say this could be the end. I placed my head inside my hands and cried for the light I might never have. When I was done, I wiped the tears from my eyes. I said, with all the strength left in me, yeah. And this is a call to anyone who's ever felt alone. Thank you so much, Anne. How beautiful was that? Moving forward, we have the author and illustrator of one of the books we mentioned earlier here with us tonight for an interview. We'd like to welcome author Geraldine Guadagno and illustrator Loretta Rauschuber. Geraldine Guadagno enjoys writing in a variety of genres for children and adults. Her books include Five Steps to Facing Suffering and John of the Smiles. Loretta Rauschuber's creativity started when she was 15 with scenic oil on canvas artwork. Blessed Caraluce Badano is her second book of illustrations to be published. We want to get to know Caraluce through some of the illustrations from their new book, Blessed Chiara Badano. Now, we all know the saying that a picture is worth a thousand words, so these illustrations should really help us further understand Caraluce's experiences. Jerry and Loretta, good evening to you both. Hello, hi Mark. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Great to be here. So uh, are we starting? There we are. There's the first illustration. 
Yes, why don't you tell us what's going on here in this picture? We see that she's holding some dolls. What's going on over here? Um, in this illustration, Kiara is four years old and her mother had asked her if she would give some of her toys to poor children. Kiara first said, no, they're mine. But a few minutes later, she asked her mother for a plastic bag and then she began putting her toys in it. When her mother said, those are your new toys, Kiara replied, mama, you can't give old broken toys to poor children. So even at such a young age, Kiara seemed to understand not only about giving, but about loving as Jesus wants us to love. The way to love Jesus in the poor was to give the newer toys. However, like every child, she sometimes misbehaved and had to be taught right from wrong. And in this illustration, the yellow um, looks like sunshine to me and, um, and makes me happy. And uh, Kiara's expression just, ex you know, is full of the joy of childhood. Yeah, and um, I guess what I wanted to express uh, most of all was that she really loved her toys. She's squeezing her toys. She really loves them so much. And uh, that she was willing to share the best of what she had, not just share it, but give it away. And that's what I wanted to capture in this particular illustration. And um, I did about six months of research before I ever put a paper, pencil to the paper, before I ever began to draw even one drawing. And um, uh, just everything like who were going to be the characters that I was going to actually draw? Who was I going to leave out? Who was I going to draw? Uh, what were they going to look like? Uh, what does a tape recorder look like whenever Kiara was uh, alive? What does a telephone? What did a telephone look like? Uh, what was it like? What does Cicelo look like if she's going to walk through her hometown of Cicelo? And in this whole process, it took about six months. I went through all the videos, even on internet, everything, and. Um, I had the fortune of interviewing one of Chiara Luce's mother's uh, close friends. And that interview really struck me. In that interview, um, there was like one dominating talk through that very brief time of her illness, those very few years, there was like one dominating thought um, between her mom and her dad and Chiara. And that was with all that was going on, it, their biggest concern was how to love the other, like how to love Chiara and Chiara, how to love her mom and her mom, her dad. And um, I remember during that period of time, um, I even said a prayer to Chiara Lucci and I said, help me understand what you would illustrate. And I, I remember when I, after that interview, it just kind of like all came together. And I and I realized I want to um, illustrate in all these illustrations that tenderness of love between Kiara and her mom and her dad and that love that they had for one another. And that was like uh, where, what I drew from also in this illustration here. Oh, wow. Thank you for sharing. OK, let's go to the next picture. It looks like Kiara Lucha is out with some friends, right? There we are, sorry about that. Um, yes, um, Kiara liked to have fun and her friends enjoyed being with her. She was a normal teenage girl, but she had also learned about living a life based on the gospel. And this made her act in a special way toward others, including her friends. She wanted to love them as Jesus loved them. And this prompted Kiara to listen to them deeply to make their concerns her own, whether they were happy or sad, and to be ready to give them anything she had if they needed it. However, this gospel way of living and loving included everyone because Jesus prayed, may they all be one. And Kiara did her best to love everyone that she met. Um, the orange that she's wearing uh, reminds me of the brightness of her life and personality um, and her friend who's laughing, you know, is obviously um, very happy to be there with her. 
Yeah, and um, I guess I would just add what I tried to express was something very typical, like something common, every, a common everyday event. And um, I lived in Italy as a young adult myself, and to drink espresso coffee at a coffee bar or a, in a town square was something everybody does. <laughs> and uh, somehow I wanted to express this extraordinary experience of Chiara Luce that it took place in very ordinary circumstances. And that's what uh, that's why I chose this illustration. This next picture shows her injured playing tennis. What happened? So Chiara was athletic and enjoyed tennis. Um, when she was about 16, during a tennis game, she suddenly had a terrible pain in her shoulder. It was so intense that she dropped her racket. And soon she would learn that she had a rare bone cancer. And Chiara suffered as she endured medical tests examinations, operations, and treatments. Uh, but in, in the gospel way of living, Chiara had learned that Jesus was present in every difficulty and suffering. He was there in a very special way, in the same way that he had once suffered feeling forsaken by his father while he was on the cross. And it was a struggle, but through it all, Yara did her best to love Jesus hidden beneath her illness and to keep loving others as Jesus loved them. And those others included her doctors, other medical staff, and even other patients. And at the same time, Yara's friends who also wanted to live the gospel stayed close to her and, and her family in order to love her as she experienced the suffering of Jesus. And in this illustration, um, there's a lot of movement you can see in her, in her ponytail and her skirt, which is really nice. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I, could, I can just add a couple of things. What I, um, what I, I intentionally created tilt in this, uh, in this picture. You can see the background is tilted, and it's different than the, the net, the tennis net and uh, there's tilt in her shoulders and in her expression on her face and uh, that was to uh, express that something's wrong something's wrong and uh, so it's just a, a way to um, somehow say that this was like a pivotal another pivotal moment but a, that it was the beginning of something that uh, that would be discovered later is something um, her ear, which what became her illness. Yeah, they understood it was her illness. So, yeah. I see. Lastly, we have a picture of her in her bed. Tell us about this moment. So, despite her illness, Kiara always found a way to be up for others, um, especially her family and her friends who called her or visited her. She always smiled and she did her best to love them and to be more concerned about them than she was for herself. Can you imagine being so terribly ill and yet be more concerned about loving others and making them happy? <clears throat> it's a difficult task. Um, at one point, her father wondered if she might be putting on an act. And after leaving her alone in her bedroom, he peeked through the keyhole. And there was Kiara still smiling through all of her pain. And I think that her smile meant that she was focused on Jesus always being with her. Yeah, um, it, this, uh, this particular illustration is very dear to me. It was something that uh, when I read the manuscript, uh, and I realized that Jerry had written about this particular episode, I knew I wanted to illustrate it. And the reason is because I, uh, I, I was living in Italy and actually part of the Italian Focolare community during the years of her illness, of Chiara Luce's illness. 
And we were like one big family and we knew it, perhaps not everything, but we knew many things about her illness. It, we, they were being shared and we were praying for her and we would offer our daily struggles. And, um, and uh, at one day I remember, and I don't quite remember if it was during her illness or was it a, a shortly after, uh, but uh, this story about Ruggiero and he was, looking through the keyhole and he was really curious he says well does she smile all the time like or is she just doing that for me when i'm present and um i don't know for me in that the first time i heard it it gave me so much strength and so many times after that like to pick myself up and smile when i'm disappointed or uh, in front of a failure when i when i realized i failed and uh it helped me then and in throughout the years and even now and so um i was really happy to when i read it for the first time that this was going to be part of the book and uh so i really wanted this to be one of the illustrations yeah oh wow that's beautiful thank you so much jerry and loretta we really appreciate that you took the time to share your knowledge with us and the illustrated book, Blessed Chiara Luce Vodano, Her Secrets to Happiness, is intended especially for a young audience and can be a powerful resource for confirmation classes or religious education in general. Now, we'd like to introduce Mary, who is mother and a religious educator who is a mother and a religious educator, who will explain to us how the story of Chiara Luce can help many parents and people working in religious education to accompany young people in their faith journey. Can you tell us more about that, Mary? My name is Mary Black, and my husband Charlie and I have been married for 33 years. We have four sons, and they are now all young adult men. We were always involved in our faith formation of our children from the very beginning, even within our parish where I volunteered for five years teaching religious education to the elementary age. Then as our kids grew older, I shifted into middle school and high school, but I also was on staff for the last 10 years in confirmation programs in the Dallas Diocese. And it has taught us so much in reflecting on what parents are going through. So many of the comments that we heard that parents struggle with is, I don't know how to parent in this day and age. My kids, my teenagers don't wanna to go to church, they don't wanna to go to mass. They think it's boring. And my favorite is, how can I make my kids holy? Like I can't. And all of those struggles are struggles that Charlie and I went through. And reading the story of Kiara Badano showed us so much of how her parents had a relationship with her. When she was younger, they offered her advice. They didn't demand it, but they offered it. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? Until as she got into her early teens, they gave her space. They even allowed her to just deal with the pain on her own, not even saying a word but they were united with her. And this gave us great insight as to how we could also raise our boys and have that relationship with them. And in the confirmation program that I have been involved with in the last 10 years at three different parishes, I have found the same thing. How do you explain the Holy Spirit? How do you explain the manifestation of the Holy Spirit? in our lives, in an everyday occurrence. Yes, we explain the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, but do we show them concrete ways of how it can be manifested in our lives? I urge you, if you are a volunteer or on the core team or heading these confirmation programs, I urge you to read the story of Kiara Badano. It's incredible. It shows, and it, it shows how her effort was weaved into God's grace in helping her take the next step. We can't become saints on our own, but it shows you a beautiful way of Kiara's effort that she gave in starting again, in looking for ways to love others. And the next step was grace. You could tell, you can tell it's not on her own. 
these, these graces had to come from God, but it was a beautiful way of showing how God works in our lives when we allow him. And one of the cruxes, crux teachings of the Catholic Church is redemptive suffering. I don't know the last time I heard a homily on it, much less teaching in our confirmation programs, but redemptive suffering is such a vital part of our Catholic teaching. Again, Chiara shows us the most beautiful way of how to live redemptive suffering. It's not explained in words intellectually, but our confirmation candidates get it when we explain it with a story. And Chiara's story is worth hearing and it's worth teaching. It will bring us closer to God and it will bring your confirmation program to a new level in sharing her story in retreats or in everyday classes. We can do this together. We can live Kiara's story together. Thank you, Mary. We hope that the two new books of Kiara Le about Kiara Lucha Badano will be useful resources for many parents and religious educators. So, Kiara Lucha was beatified in 2010. Thousands of people from all over the world gathered in Rome for that celebration. And several members of the Focolare from the United States made the trip to Rome to attend the event. We have two of them with us now to share their experiences with us, Karen Dizon and Noah Gonzalez. Karen, how is the beatification for you? Thanks, Mark. The beatification of Chiara Luce was on September 25th, 2010. I can't believe that was 11 years ago. I was still a young girl at the time, and I traveled to Rome, Italy to be one of 20,000 people present for the event. This was my first international event with the Focolare movement, and I remember I was completely awestruck by how many youth and adults from over 70 nations across the five continents traveled for this occasion. That same evening, there was a celebration of music at the Vatican. I remember there were so many of us participating that we could not fit in our designated hall. And there were many people who had to watch the event on large screens placed um, in St. Peter's Square. So for me, the entire day was a time of celebration. Many people, including Chiara Luce's parents, bear witness on how Chiara embraced God's will with such grace. I remember thinking her capacity to love the people around her was so pure that even years after her death, people still celebrated how she lived her life. Returning from the trip back home, I felt this immense gratitude to experience how just one life could have an expansive impact on people. For me, Chiara Luce is an example on how the path to sanctity is attainable. She lived a radical life, but not by traveling the world or doing extraordinary things at such a young age. She did so by approaching every situation, every person in front of her with immense care and attention. Her simple acts of love transformed the people around her and God's light filled their hearts. I understood then and continue to be reminded of what it means to live a life of unwavering faith. So thank you, Kara Luce. Thank you for sharing, Karen. Next, we have Noah. What did going to Rome for the beatification of Kara Luce mean for you? Well, hi, I am uh, Noe Gonzalez, and I am uh, 31 years old. So I met the Focolata when I was 12 years old uh, through Mike Morris, which was our youth coordinator in California at the time. And uh, he's also one of the organizers for today. Uh, and I met him at our local youth group in Madera, California. So later, when I was 15, I went to my first Focolata event uh, called the Mariapolis. There I met many wonderful friends, uh, learned all about the Focolata movement and fell in love with it all. In September of 2010, I was a different person. 
I was about to be 21. At this point in my life, I'd been working on an ambulance and as a fireman for two years. Needless to say, morally, I was at my worst. Although my job was to help people, the stress produced by the calls I responded to and the horrible events I witnessed definitely changed my outlook on everything. I guess looking back now, I couldn't deal with those experiences and I didn't know how to talk about it. All I knew was that the only people that understood me were my work partners. No one else would understand the feelings I felt. So I kept it all locked inside. I'd begun to drink more, party more, while praying less and distancing myself from God. So when Mike Morris called and asked if I wanted to go to Rome for the beatification, I thought, why not? A trip to Europe? 21. That sounds great. What an adventure. I get to see the world, see my friends, and meet new people. I'd heard about Chiara Lucia before. I knew she was young when she passed away and that she was from Italy, but that was it. Now, the flight to Italy was great. I was with my Focolata friends, um, and we were generally excited to see Rome and the surrounding areas. After landing, we went to the airport and went to the area we, that, would be, uh, that we would be at for the next few days. We immediately dove headfirst into living like the Focolata movement asks us to. We practiced living first and putting others before ourselves. We also learned about Chiara's life a little more in depth. I learned how she was a member of the Focolata, like I was, and how she had been diagnosed with cancer at a young age. How the rare form of bone cancer was really painful, but that she would refuse morphine in order to remain lucid. She wanted to do this in order to share her pain with God. Now, how is it that a young person, younger than I, who is fighting for her life, how is she able to love God like that? How is she not bitter and angry with her fate? I kept wondering, why am I not able to love God like that? I'm healthy. I think I'm smart. I'm blessed. Yet I don't love God the way she does. Why am I not a great son to my parents like she was a daughter? Why do I deal with my stressors in a way that harms me more? Why am I not grateful for all I have? Needless to say, I started to see myself in a different light and not in a good one. There I was thinking that because I work on an ambulance, saving people's lives, that I'm righteous for some reason. I thought that my stressors were the biggest in the world and that no one would understand. But Kiara, even on her worst days, when it would be okay if she was mad at the world, she loved God. And everyone could see it in her eyes. I mean, her last words were, bye, mom. Be happy because I am. She just loved God. Yet if people saw me, they would not see Jesus. And honestly, I hate to imagine what they would see. My view of me was crushed. Now imagine, you're 20 and you realize you suck. I remember being at the sanctuary of Our Lady of Divine Love and being amazed at how her life touched all the thousands of people that were in attendance. And I vowed I'd do the same in my own little way. I don't know if I've accomplished that or not, but I do know that I've tried. After returning from the beatification, I immediately met the lady who was to be my wife. We now have three kids and a home full of love. I work on a helicopter as a flight officer and as a paramedic on the helicopter and feel blessed to help people on their worst days, even if it means to experience some unfortunate events because I know God put me there and he put me there for a reason and he knows that I can handle it. Honestly, if not for my experience at the beatification, I do not think I would have settled down. That experience changed me inside and out and catapulted me into the amazing life that I live now with my wife and kids. And to this day, every time life gets hard, I think of how Chiara Lucha loved God and it serves as a reminder to shut my mouth and put my best foot forward. And, um, but of course, my spiritual growth didn't uh, happen without help. Um, I remember Mike and I going to Castel Gandolfo, where the Pope's vacation home is at. And uh, we grabbed a slice of beer and talked about life. That day, he helped me put the pieces together. He helped me make sense of the feelings of the, pre the previous days had invoked. And that was by far the best beer and talk I ever had. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much for sharing both Karen and Noah. very moving stories. Well, moving forward with the program, we'd like to bring on Jessica, 
a person who has a special connection with Chiara Luce. Blessed Chiara Luce touched the lives of so many people, like um, Karen and Noe are examples of. And she touched so many people around the world who through her found solace and light, especially in these difficult moments. But for Jessica, the encounter with Chiara Luce was something that changed her entire way of living and helped her discover her own vocation. Let's take a look. Hi y'all, my name is Jessica Behrens and I am a relocated Yankee living down in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'd like to share with y'all a little bit about how I met Chiara Luce Bedano. I like to use the word met because it really was this encounter with an actual person and not a nice story or memory of someone who lived a good life a long time ago. And so this was about 10 years ago, right around the time of Blessed Chiara Luce's beatification. And it was a difficult moment for me. I started to get sick with symptoms that doctors thought were the first stages of multiple sclerosis. Um, I had always been healthy. I even played bas basketball in college. And so it was a new experience for me. Um, the unknown, uh, an illness like MS wouldn't allow me to do things that I had planned for my life. After all these diagnostic tests, it just left me scared. And one of these tests was a spinal tap gone completely wrong. Um, I had some complications from it. After the procedure, I was in bed for several days uh, just with this excruciating pain. It was really the worst pain I had ever been in in my life. And I just felt completely abandoned by God, like he was supposed to be there to help me, but I couldn't feel him at all. A few days later, I came across this random article in my inbox about the story of Chiara Luce and how she had lived her experience of illness. She had died of cancer, a really painful type of cancer, right before her 19th birthday. And so during that experience, she would say to God, if you want it, Jesus, then I want it too. And so reading this article, I was over flooded in that moment uh, with just this sense of joy and peace, as though Chiara Luce were coming into my own scary reality and offering her friendship. I also saw her as his teammate, going back to those basketball days uh, that God had sent to run beside me so that I could make it too. Because in college, what would happen uh, when we would do sprints, if you were kind of slow, which I was, I was always a slower player, um, our coach would pair you with a faster player. And what always happened was that that slower player picked up the pace of the faster player and running together, they both made it in time. And so I, I thought of Kara Lucha as this faster player who was coming to run beside me. That basically launched our adventure. <laughs> and I really tried to learn everything I could about her, research it online, whatever language it was in, Spanish, Italian, whatever. The love she had for everyone was so open and universal. And she lived the present moment just focusing on what was in front of her and who she could love in front of her. And so trying to live like that really changed my perspective. Instead of being fearful for what the future might bring, the big unknown, would I get sick, would I not get sick, whatever, <laughs> um, I started instead to just wake up with joy, thinking, today I, I get to love. And so more moments of life, whatever they meant, just became more opportunities to be able to love. And so little by little, as I was running next to Chiara Luce, I realized that she was taking me someplace. And this was to discover the folklore spirituality that she had lived when she had been alive on earth. She had been a youth member of the folklore movement. The folklore really has at its core the belief that God is love, and that God is love especially in moments of suffering. And so it recalled me back to those days of intense pain on my sick bed when it really wasn't the absence of God, but it was an experience of God himself. And even Caraluccia when she suffered, she would say, I often feel crushed by suffering, but it's in these moments that God is coming to visit me. And so I thought, okay, if God is love even in suffering, I can't do anything better than with my life than to return his love and to follow him. I also offered my life path, my vocation, my future to Kiara Luce, telling her and God, you know, whatever you want, I'll be happy with. And little by little, it became clear what, what God wanted of me. And it turned out to be the Focolare. So now I live down in Atlanta. I'm in community with five other consecrated women. 
and we try to put Jesus's commandment of mutual love into practice so that God can be with us and then we can be an expression of his love for the world. In the end, I actually never had a recurrence of symptoms. Surprise, <laughs> not sick. <laughs> maybe, who knows, maybe it was all an excuse of God to be able to discover his love. And so as Kara Lucci would say, uh, young people are the future. They have only one life to live, and so it makes sense to spend it well. What a powerful and heartwarming story. So, in her experience, Jessica said that through Chiara Luce and the Focolare spirituality, she realized that even in moments of suffering, we can find and experience God's love. In fact, Chiara Luce, the foundress of the Focolare, discovered God's greatest love for us and what she refers to as Jesus forsaken in that moment when Jesus on the cross felt abandoned by the Father. Chiara Luce Badano learned about Jesus Forsaken from a very young age, and we can say that Jesus Forsaken became one of her most important secrets to happiness. We asked Father Tyler, who is a priest and a member of the Focolare, to explain to us what we mean when we talk about Jesus Forsaken and how all of us can live this reality in our daily life. Hi, my name is Father Tyler, and I'm a priest in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I want to share just a little bit about Jesus Forsaken and just an experience that I've had recently of Jesus Forsaken. Uh, Jesus Forsaken refers to Jesus when he's on the cross, and one of his last words is he cries out, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? And in that moment of Jesus crying out in forsakenness, it's the greatest suffering of Jesus, but it's also when Jesus loves the most. And so suffering and love are combined and the suffering is transformed by the love. And so in Jesus forsaken, he takes on every suffering, every pain, even every sin is taken up and can become, in a way, the face of Jesus. Because in every pain or suffering or sin can become the face of love, the face of Jesus forsaken. Not that we would love the suffering or the pain or the sin, but we love Jesus, who takes all those things on him and he transforms them and he redeems them and we're able to experience new life through Jesus. That's why Jesus Forsaken was so powerful in the life of Chiara Luce. Just an experience of what this looks like to love Jesus Forsaken in everyday life. I recently took on a new assignment in my priestly ministry. So I have two parishes and I have a college ministry. And it's been a lot. And for a while, I was feeling pretty overwhelmed. And I was noticing that in my feeling of being overwhelmed, I was kind of closing in on myself, was sort of becoming anxious and sad, and was just sort of stuck in myself. But then I recognized, oh, you know, when Jesus was on the cross and he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He probably felt overwhelmed too. And so I recognize, oh, like in my feeling of being overwhelmed, I can actually love Jesus forsaken here. I can love Jesus forsaken who's showing up for me in the face of being overwhelmed. And so I did. I love Jesus forsaken and I embraced him and I said, I love you, Jesus, so much. And what I discovered was when I was able to love Jesus forsaken in, in my suffering of feeling overwhelmed, that it didn't necessarily take all my problems away, uh, but
but it did allow me to experience the love of Jesus right where I felt most overwhelmed, right where I was feeling the most suffering. And I was able to love even in the midst of suffering because I was able to love Jesus forsaken. And I've experienced a lot of peace since then. So that's just one example. But I encounter the face of Jesus forsaken every day because, of course, every single day we encounter some type of suffering, some type of pain, or some type of sin. Uh, but that's the great gift that loving Jesus forsaken can offer us is that in all those moments, uh, we're able to experience love and we're able to become holy even in this life. Thank you, Father Tyler. Now we can understand better why Jesus Forsaken was so important in the life of Chiara Luce. And we also see that it is something that each one of us can live every time we encounter a moment of suffering. Now, we are very happy to share with you a message we received from the Badano Foundation, which is composed of Chiara Luce's family and closest friends. The purpose of the foundation is to preserve and guard the authentic memory of Chiara Badano and keep it alive. In case you forgot, they are the authors of the new book, In My Saying Is Your Going, The Life and Thoughts of Chiara Luce Badano. They are very busy these days preparing the celebration for Chiara Luce in her hometown, Sicello, but they wanted to be present here with us through a video message. Let's watch it together. My warmest greetings to you attending this webinar which celebrates Blessed Caraluce Badano. It would have been nice to actually connect with you live and exchange our impressions, but at least I'm able to be present through this short video. Many greetings from everyone at the Cara Badano Foundation, whom I represent at this moment, and especially from Maria Teresa Badano, Cara Luce's mother, who is also the president of the foundation. She sends her greetings with a big virtual hug to each of you. My name is Kika, and I was a close friend of Cara Luce. This webinar offers the opportunity to get to know Blessed Cara Luce a little better on the eve of what would have been her 50th birthday. We are actually kicking off the celebration with you in the U.S. and will be continuing to celebrate tomorrow in her hometown, Sassello, Italy. This celebration is also an occasion to launch two new books on Cara's life. A lot of work went into the release of these two new books here at the Foundation. It demanded a lot from us and made us question ourselves deeply to make sure that everything written here truly expresses what we, her family and friends, witnessed firsthand alongside Cara Luce. In fact, we feel called to share the real Chiara just as she was, with her typical characteristics that appear more and more precious to us as time passes. We also want you to have a direct relationship with her. What we wrote as a foundation is the volume entitled In My Staying Is Your Going, The Life and Thoughts of Cara Luce Badano, where the one who speaks is above all Blessed Cara Luce. In fact, her writings and her thoughts guide this short biography which summarizes the most important stages in her life. These are all truly attested words collected in this small volume. In these pages, what comes to life beyond her spiritual adventure are the love of her parents and of her many friends with whom she shared the joys, hopes, and sufferings of her life. After many years, we can say that Chiara Luce speaks not so much to the crowds, but directly to the heart of each person in ways unknown to us. She knows how to touch people in a wonderful way, and this never ceases to amaze us. Therefore, we hope that through these two books, it will be Chiara Luce herself to tell her own story, involving readers in dynamic ways to get to know her better. As I mentioned, I was one of her close friends. I was a little older than Chiara Luce. I met her through my involvement with the Focolare movement. With just a glance, we understood that we would be friends forever, and this immediate friendship grew stronger and deeper every day. When I went to visit Chiara Luce after she became sick, we did not talk much about her illness. Instead, she communicated serenity, peace, and joy to all who approached her. 
Carolucci simply continued to love her parents, doctors and nurses, and us, her friends, until her very last breath. I was also able to be with her during this entire time of her illness, and I saw with my own eyes the wonders that God performed in her, and how she corresponded to what God was asking of her. And for me, this was a really special gift. Being with Carolucci, I experienced an atmosphere of extraordinary normality of heaven on earth. This is how it was with her. Extraordinary things became normal, and normal stuff acquired a sense of sacredness. As a witness, I can say that Carolucci's life was a crescendo of light. She never gave many speeches or did extraordinary things, but her yes to God moment by moment, one small step at a time, with simplicity, was extraordinary. It was then, and is still today, what continues to conquer and fascinate many people, especially young people who see in her a role model and someone that shines light on their path especially now during this pandemic when life is full of uncertainties and it becomes difficult to plan a future, her life continues to give hope to the heart. We hope that many people in the U.S. will get to know Cara Luce through these two books. And just as it has been for me, I hope the reader will be able to start a direct conversation with Cara Luce and find a special friend in her. In closing, I'd just like to let you know that here at the Foundation, we'd love to hear from you. We welcome your feedback and you can write to us at fundacionecarabadano.org. We can also stay connected with news, projects, and initiatives inspired by Caraluce through our website, carabadano.org. You are all welcome to join us at our next appointment, which will be on October 29th to 30th, to commemorate the liturgical feast day. Happy reading and see you soon. Thank you, Kika. As Kika was saying, the new book edited by the Badano Foundation gathers many words and writings by Chiara Luce. We selected some quotes from the book and we want to share them with you now. We invited Francesca to read the quotes for us. Hi, Francesca, thank you for being with us. Hi. We'll hear for, from Francesca in a minute, but first I want to invite everybody to take a deep breath and try to forget all the noise and the problems of the world around us. Let's take this moment to hear from Chiara Lucha herself. Imagine she is talking to you right now in a personal way. I see the importance of letting go in order to be and do God's will. I feel so small and the road ahead is so difficult. I often feel overwhelmed by the pain, but it's the spouse who comes, correct? Yes, I say it again with you. If you want it, Jesus, then I want it too. I discovered the gospel in a new light. I realized that I wasn't an authentic Christian because I didn't leave it all the way. Now I want to make this magnificent book my only purpose in life. I can't and don't want to remain illiterate of such an extraordinary message. <laughs> Mindful of my own nothingness, I try to offer my suffering when it's most difficult. Be mindful of God's love. But Africa was always in her heart too. She gave the money she received from her birthday to Jian, a friend of the family who was about to leave for Benin. She handed it to him explaining, I don't need this money. I have everything. The only time that anyone possesses is the present moment. 
which should be lived completely, taking full advantage of it. By living in this way, people will feel free because they are no longer crushed by the anguish of the past and worries about the future. I only care about doing God's will, doing that well in the present moment, keeping on playing God's game. Look, I don't have anything anymore, but I do have a heart. And with that, I can still love. A person could give meaning to everything by going beyond selfishness and giving value to everything by doing it for others. Perhaps we would have to give a new intention to each of our actions and we will certainly feel more fulfilled and become more aware of the value of life as a precious gift that cannot and should not be wasted nor burned up in sterile selfishness and useless ambition. Jesus, make us love one another so much on this earth that we will reach you and be happy together forever. We have begun our adventure doing God's will in the present moment. With the gospel in hand, we will do great, we will do great things. I offer all of you my nothingness so that the Holy Spirit may bestow on all these young people all his gifts of love, light, and peace so that everyone will understand what a free and immeasurable gift life is and how very important it is to live every moment of life in the fullness of God. In my staying is your going. Thank you, Francesca. We're moving close to the conclusion of our birthday celebration. But there is no birthday party without presents, right? And I am sure that all of us would like to give Chiara Luce a present to thank her for her living her life to the fullest. But how can we do this? Well, we'd like to invite Brian Rillo from Canada and Christina Zuniga from Texas to join our event and help us to prepare our birthday gifts for Chiara Luce. We'll turn it over to them now. Thanks, Dulce and Mark. This evening was filled with many wonderful experiences. ways Caraluche has impacted so many lives, from all those who shared about why they chose Caraluche as their namesake, to Anne being inspired to write a song, and Jerry and Loretta sharing their talents to write a book and illustrate the life of Caraluche. Yes, it was also great to hear from Karen and Loretta's experiences when they attended Caraluche's beatification, and Jessica, who shared her own personal experience of living Jesus forsaken and listening to God's will. Chiara Lucha's light shines bright and brings forth inspiration to live life to the fullest in each of our own lives. What struck me most about Chiara Lucha's life was her love for Jesus Forsaken. In one of her writings, she said, I rediscovered Jesus Forsaken. At first, I loved him rather superficially and I accepted him in expectation of the joy that would come to me. I realized that I was doing it all wrong. I shouldn't have instrumentalized him, but loved him and that's all. I discovered that Jesus forsaken is the key to unity with God, and I want to choose him as my first spouse, getting ready for when he comes, and I want to do the same. I really enjoyed hearing from all of those who carry Kiata Lucha as their namesake. What stood out to me is Kiata being relatable in her ordinary living. She lived very simply, yet so brave and powerful in her actions. And I also love that image Jessica gave 
at seeing Shadowlucha as a teammate in life and how inspiring that is to strive to be that for someone else in my everyday living. We'd like to take this moment to reflect on how each one of us can live our life to the fullest. Inspired by the life of Chiara Luce and offer up these resolutions as birthday gifts to Chiara Luce. My gift to Chiara Luce is loving Jesus forsaken. Learning to love Jesus forsaken has changed my life. I try to embrace every day's inconvenience out of love and offer them to Jesus. Like Chiara Luce, I want to do the will of God in every present moment and just keep on loving. Chiara Luce surely paved the way for us and showed us that holiness is possible. My birthday gift to Chiara Luce is to be that good teammate to others in my day-to-day -day life, to lend a helping hand when I can, and to continue loving others just as Chiara Luce did. And now, I'd like to invite you to take a few minutes to reflect on how you can live your life to the fullest like Chiara Luce, and offer up your resolutions as a birthday gift to her. And when you are ready, there will be a link in the chat soon to a website called Padlet, where you can write and share your gift. And everyone participating tonight will be able to see all the gifts being offered up to Kiata Lucha. We have instructions on how to use Padlet for those not familiar. You click the link on the chat to Padlet and a new web browser or tab will pop up for Padlet. At the bottom right hand of the screen, there is a button with a plus sign. Click it and a white box will appear. You can type your gift to Caroluce in the box once you are done, and then click publish at the top right corner of the box when you are finished. to another day Sometimes it's hard to roll out of bed and face the world again I put on my bravest smile Look to the sky and say that I'm ready for anything you've got I know I'm blessed beyond compare But that doesn't mean Life is perfect at all But I've been given everything To make it through this thing We're called life And so I step out to the street mm -hmm. See you all the problems you in read. this world That are facing So much guide, but people are homeless and hopeless, and children die in their sleep. You know, there's a reason for the pain, but more than anything, I just want to make a change. Wow, thank you for sharing. So when the sun is gone and dark is left, I close my eyes. They're all very beautiful. The one that said to smile, to be well, something more, even smile when still aren't looking. To say yes to him. Oh, these are moving really fast. To say yes to him in each moment. Encouragement. I want to encourage others like Carol Luce did with those around her. In moments of suffering, increase love. To start over again. A new choice of Jesus, of Jesus forsaken and living for unity. To love every difficult moment that comes 
and trust God is. Oops. It keeps moving. Yeah. This is beautiful. To know God is always with me. To do the will of God in the present moment. To smile and to be, to be loved like she did, even when no one was watching. Thank you all for offering up these beautiful birthday gifts to Kiara Luce. And we'll send it back to Dulce and Mark. Thank you very much, Ryan and Christina. So this now concludes our program. We'd like to thank all of the people behind the scenes who made this possible. We'd also like to thank the organization's New City Press, the Youth Center for North America, and Living City for planning and sponsoring this event. We'd also like to thank all of our guest speakers for sharing their time and life lessons with us. And of course, we'd like to thank all of you for joining us. You should all be receiving a follow-up email with the recording of this event. You will also find some individual segments of this program on the YouTube channel of New City Press. Also, in the follow-up email, you will receive all the information about the new books and other useful resources. Feel free to share this content with all your contacts. I'm pretty sure you know someone who might need Chiara Luce in her life right now or in their life right now. On behalf of everyone who put their time and effort into this, we'd like to say thank you, good night, take care, and God bless. Thank you, everyone.